Good evening, and welcome to our first virtual State of the School Address. It is not the strongest or the most intelligent who will survive, but those who can best manage change, by Charles Darwin. Seems like a fitting quote for tonight's meeting. COVID-19 has definitely brought about many changes to Sacred Heart Catholic School, and those changes change on a daily, if not minute-by-minute -minute basis. As Dr. Underwood, our Advisory Council President, Ms. Flanagan, our elementary principal, and I begin to discuss those changes, let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you to those of you who sent us questions and concerns to address during this meeting. After the meeting, we will email our stakeholders a synopsis of the questions along with their answers. This will be sent Monday in a frequently asked questions format due to the fact that we are still receiving a few questions. Keep in mind that things are changing daily and some of the answers may change. However, we will be sending weekly email updates to keep you informed of last minute changes. Be sure when you read your updates that you are seeing the latest information. My name is Greg Underwood and Sacred Heart Parents, I offer you a great welcome for the 2020-21 school year from your school advisory council for which I currently serve as president. For those of you who don't know, Sacred Heart School School Advisory Council makes recommendations to the pastor, principal, and head of administration regarding school policy. We have no supervisory role over personnel or role in the daily implementation of the school's policy and procedures. We offer our help and expertise to fully support Sacred Heart's administrators and teachers as we prepare to undertake this most unusual of school years. And we encourage you to do the same. If you're interested or want to know, the board is comprised of practicing Catholics from the five area parishes who have children enrolled in Sacred Heart. If you're interested in serving, please contact Sacred Heart's pastor, Father Ken Ramon Landry. Before I begin with some of this year's changes, I must ask if you do have questions, and I'm sure you will. As an educator myself, we all have plenty of known unknown and unknown unknowns that we're about to face over the next few months. They please direct your questions as emails to Dr. Yankai or Mrs. Flanagan, and not to Facebook or other social media. This is a year and environment in which we all need the full, the full support to make Sacred Heart the best that it can be. In return, you can expect from Sacred Heart honesty and transparent and frequent communication. Sacred Heart's administration and faculty have worked all summer long trying to prepare for something that no school has really experienced before. We've learned a great deal from March 14th throughout the summer. And so with that, at this time, I'll let you know that we will not be providing laptops or Chromebooks for students who choose virtual at-home learning. Students will need a device to participate in virtual at-home learning. They'll have to log in daily to their classes and submit assignments in real time, just as those in the classroom are doing. For the high school, the Google suite of applications will be the primary method of contact. If you choose virtual at-home learning, you'll need to sign an agreement that states that you have the equipment and internet capability to participate on a regular basis. You'll also need to sign up for the entire semester. If your circumstances change, of course, you can contact your principal and other arrangements can possibly be made. I should mention that your tuition is the same for virtual at-home learning as it is for those students who are attending in the classroom because you are receiving a fully accredited Mississippi Department of Education and Southern Association of College and Schools Education, something that might not be the case with traditional homeschooled education. Moreover, like the vast majority of private tuition-dependent schools, Sacred Heart is nonprofit. It has been, it is, and always will be. There is no cushion, or perhaps better put, profit built into the budget that could be refunded in the form of a tuition discount. Um, there are no discounts that could be offered without cutting staff and teachers. With that in mind, the teachers have been hired and your child is being taught, whether you've chosen face-to-face -face or chosen virtual at-home learning. Teachers take more preparation time, actually, for the virtual at-home learning since they'll be having office hours, recording new materials, and learning a new way to teach the at-home learners. Lectures will be live when possible, with new materials being taped for viewing later for clarification if needed. And yes, we are training teachers uh, with additional materials and, and processes over the summer, 
And not every teacher will do it the exact same way, but we are using common platforms. We're doing everything we can to keep your children safe while they receive a first-rate Catholic education. Our expectations for you and your students are that you'll embrace these changes, be positive, and be willing to work with us as we go forward. Thank you so much, and God bless Sacred Heart. Hello, Sacred Heart. I'm Vicki Flanagan, your elementary principal. Well, these are unprecedented times, to say the least. I am confident this year will be great. It will be different, but it will be great. Please know that Dr. Yankai and I have worked all summer long putting protocols and procedures in place to provide the safest nurturing environment for your children and for our staff and our faculty. We're excited to be able to resume classes and to see everyone again. You all have been terribly missed. Now to address some of your concerns. Students will be required to wear masks as they arrive to campus. Temperatures will be taken and hand sanitizer will be used when they enter and leave the classrooms. Whenever we can properly social distance, recess, lunch, in the classrooms during instruction, students may remove their masks. In common areas such as the hallways, masks will be required. That's just to keep each other safe. There will be changes to arrival and dismissal this year. Walkers will not be an option. All students will use carpool. Carpool will begin at 7.15 this, this year and students will enter the building through the breezeway as they always have. Afternoon carpool will begin at 2.45. For dismissal in the afternoons, there will be two carpool lines this year using the students last names. Students whose last name begins A through M will use the carpool line on Walnut Street, the usual one. Students whose last names begin with N through Z will use a new carpool line on Southern Avenue along the Black Gates out in the front of the school. Parents will enter this new car line turning on to, to Southern Avenue from Court Street. Both lines will pull up, load their children, and move off as a group when the traffic crossing guard tells you to do so. Then the next set of vehicles will be instructed to pull up. Please know that we'll help students buckle them, their seat belts as needed. Please be mindful of our neighbors and do not block the driveways on Walnut and, South, and Court Street. Students will not be stuck in the classrooms all day. Whereas most specials will be taught in the classrooms, PE, computer, and at times um, library will not be. We have arranged the schedules where students can safely eat in the cafeteria and outside recess can also take place safely. Currently, our class sizes range from about 15 to 22. 16 to 17 seems to be the average. This helps when arranging students' desks in the classrooms as far apart as possible. We have small class sizes to give more individualized attention to our in-school and to be more effective with our distance learners. We are providing a strong educational foundation for all students at Sacred Heart Catholic School. Karen Charles will still tutor and test individual students. Social distancing will be followed and the common area and all shared manipulatives will be sanitized between students. Speech therapy and ELL services will also take place following the same safety procedures. We will still open the cafeteria at seven each morning for breakfast, and we will provide extend, extended care in the afternoons. Detailed safety procedures have been put in place in order to maintain social distancing. Distance learning will be offered at the elementary level. Pre-K and kindergarten will use Seesaw to deliver age-appropriate instruction. First through sixth grades will use Google Classroom to deliver instruction for continuity across grade levels. Professional training in these platforms is taking place now and will continue over the next few weeks. Teachers will film themselves instructing new material to post for students. To mirror and maintain the same rigor with distance learning as classroom instruction, our specials teachers will also post lessons and videotape new material teaching weekly. Parents, you will only be the facilitators and not the teachers. Having the tape lessons, all students will be able to view the lessons whenever the need be. Tests may be downloaded and administered live on Google Meet to maintain the integrity of assessments. Attendance will be taken. 
Distance learners must log in daily to, on Google Classroom in order to be counted present. Grades will be taken. Students will be accountable for their work. Deadlines will be adhered to. Sacred Heart is a college prep school from pre-K through 6th, 12th grade, and we, will remain the, um, and we will maintain the rigor our students are accustomed to. There will always be issues with distance learning, so teachers will work with each student and their individual needs, whether it's technical glitches or academic needs. Teachers will have regular office hours on Google Meet devoted to address questions and concerns from, from our parents and our students but they will also Google Meet with all their students to be a face to their students and to socialize. Joy Suggs will be the contact person to provide technical support to the students and parents. She may be reached at jsuggs at shshattisburg.com. All teachers turn in weekly lesson plans indicating which MDE standards are being taught. I will be enrolled in each virtual contact for periodic ob observations to provide assistance when needed and to ensure all guidelines are being followed and content is being taught. Teachers will have Google Meet grade level meetings to discuss common goals and issues as well as Google Meet hall meetings such as uh, pre-K with K, first with second for collaboration and support. There will be Google Meet faculty, faculty meetings to discuss issues and concerns it's important that all students, parents, and teachers have the support needed in every aspect of distance learning. Communication is key. Please reach out to me if you have any concerns. I hope I've addressed your concerns about the elementary campus and have conveyed that we do have the necessary protocols and procedures in place to provide a safe and nurturing environment for your children. Thank you and God bless. There will be changes to the high school schedule this year that will include having an A-B schedule whereby students will go week one to first, second, third, and seventh periods on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And will go on week two uh, on Tuesday and Thursday. B schedule will run fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh period on Tuesday and Thursday on week one and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on week two. Seventh period will be held daily and seniors will still be allowed to opt for early release. Seventh period will remain about 55 minutes in length and all other classes will be approximately one hour and 50 minutes. These time frames meet MDE guidelines for Carnegie unit credit. Lockers will be by request only since students will only need four books per day. We are asking that students bring their own water bottles with refills. Our water fountains have been disconnected during COVID-19. Break time. We will not be having a designated break, but we will have longer lunch periods. We're asking students to bring snacks from home or to purchase them in the cafeteria first thing in the morning when they enter the building. There will be designated seating for social distancing in the cafeteria and outdoor tables, weather permitting. Seniors will be allowed to have lunch in the library with social distancing rules being followed. High school teachers will have office hours to communicate with students who need assistance. They are also willing to tutor one-on-one -on -one if a child is having difficulty understanding concepts. Students are expected to log on during their class time and to participate via Google in their lessons if they're participating in the virtual at-home learning. This year, department chairs, along with Coach Falla and myself, will be listed on all Google class roles to ensure that lessons are being followed and students are logging in for virtual at-home learning. Ms. Charles, our dyslexia therapist, will be available to work with our dyslexic, stu dyslexic students as the schedule permits. We have several new teachers at the high school. Mr. Wayne Pittman for social studies, Mr. Tony Welsh for upper, upper level math, and Mr. Michael Hogan for seventh and eighth grade science. Dr. Clay from USM will be teaching dual credit, dual enrollment English, and Dr. Andy Wiest will again teach dual credit, dual enrollment, world civilizations. 
Spencer Sherb will be the boys' basket coach, basketball coach and will be teaching 7th grade social studies in January. In reference to the question concerning federal money, we receive PPP monies that are earmarked for salaries to ensure that teachers and staff continue to be paid. Those monies are set aside in a separate account and cannot be used except for payroll and Social Security benefits. We're waiting to hear from the Hattiesburg Public Schools concerning the CARES money. That money can be spent for cleaning supplies, technology, and other COVID-related items. However, we cannot spend it until we get it approved by Hattiesburg Public Schools. This is a lengthy process. If we purchase Chromebooks or laptops with those funds, those Chromebooks or laptops still belong to Hattiesburg Public Schools. We're just allowed to use them. They will be inventoried by Hattiesburg and must be returned when we're through with them to Hattiesburg. There is no subsidy available to assist Sacred Heart parents with internet or technology cost. We are a tuition-driven school, and unless you want us to include a technology fee that would cover the cost of one-to-one -one technology or know of a benefactor, we cannot afford to do this at this time. High school athletic practices are being conducted according to MHSAA guidelines, and as of now, fall sports have been pushed back two weeks. Football will only play their district games. At this time, if you choose virtual at-home learning, your child cannot participate in extracurricular activities. High school schedules will be posted July the 29th for students. You can log into PowerSchool to see them at home. Keep in mind that high school schedules will not be changed after July 31st. If you need to change your schedule, email Ms. Pittman, which is kpittman at shshattiesburg.com and ask for your changes. Yes, masks will be worn in classes where social distancing is not possible. Yes, there will be breaks allowed for not wearing the mask. No, the school cannot afford to give masks out on a daily basis. We will have some for emergencies. Normally, infractions will not be given for not wearing masks, but if the situation warrants it, we reserve that option. Parents, we need your help to have a successful year. If we work together, we can do this. We have a huge learning curve that we will be navigating together. If you choose virtual at-home learning, please refrain from publicly scrutinizing teachers for the way they are teaching, the lessons they are assigning, or the decisions that have been made. We are charting new territory and we're striving to make decisions that will be best for our students, staff, and school. We are here to work with you to continue having Sacred Heart School remain the best school in the Pine Belt. We realize that not all of your questions have been addressed tonight, but an email will be sent Monday that addresses your questions. In the event you feel that we have not addressed your questions on Monday, please contact us and we will do our best to address them. Thank you in advance for all that you do for Sacred Heart. Thank you for your prayers and understanding as we make the best of the pandemic. And thank you for trusting us with your children's education and health. We appreciate you and God bless Sacred Heart.